Good evening and welcome to Food for Thoughts, our virtual table. My name is Misty Wood. I am a board member here at Food for Thought and tonight I am going to be your hostess with the mostess. We have a 45 minute program plan for you that we hope will delight and inspire you as we raise funds for the people of Sonoma County who really are in need. So here's what tonight's going to look like. We're going to start out in our Zoom breakout rooms and then we're going to move to a little bit of storytelling through videos and we're going to end with our fund to need program. We've got a couple of new programs coming up that we need your help with. So let's talk about those Zoom breakout rooms. In just a moment, you're going to have a box pop up on your screen. Be sure to click join when you see it. Cool. And you'll They're have about 10 open. minutes to hang out and socialize and talk with other amazing people who love and support Food for Thought as well. If you aren't really sure what to talk about, if maybe these are some strangers who are just haven't been made your friends yet, we've got two questions to get you started. The first is, what is your favorite thing about Food for Thought? <laughs> the people. second question you can contemplate is, which auction item are you most excited about? So well, let's socialize, let's head on over people. to those breakout rooms, and I will see you in 10 minutes.
No, I'm fine. Welcome back. I hope you had a chance to. That was actually kind of cool. I saw some great wine. I saw some great food. So it looked like you have. Misty, you're muted. Your mics are off. We can't hear you. Mine's on. Can't hear anything. We are so grateful and excited that you joined us in support of this amazing organization. Look, despite incredible challenges, Food for Thought they are on the move, helping more residents than ever before in their history. When the pandemic hit, Food for Thought jumped into action and served countless vulnerable neighbors who were having to isolate due to being COVID positive. And Food for Thought ensured they didn't go hungry. Through it all, this amazing organization tripled the amount of people it served in 2020, feeding 4,000 folks dealing with chronic illnesses, as well as the coronavirus. And we owe them a tremendous debt of gratitude. Food for Thought has been there for so many of us during the pandemic, and now we need to stand strong for them. I encourage each and every one of you to continue to support their work by bidding early and often in tonight's auction, and of course, donating generously. Thank you so much for having me, and let's continue to help our neighbors in need by supporting Food for Thought. I'm thrilled to be here today to honor one of my favorite nonprofit organizations in Sonoma County, and one that happens to share my hometown of Forestville. You know, um, I think it's hard to overstate the importance of Food for Thought over the past year. Um, it shouldn't come as a surprise to those who are familiar with Food for Thought's history. Everyone knows that Food for Thought was born out of the HIV AIDS crisis, which was, of course, the last pandemic that we went through as a community, but one that far too many people ignored or refused to talk about or refused to adequately resource because it impacted what at the time was a very marginalized segment of our society, our LGBTQI population. Thanks to the fantastic work of Food for Thought and others, um, we now have a handle on the HIV AIDS crisis. But when we were faced with a new crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic sweeping around our globe, who did we turn to? Food for Thought, who has prepared untold numbers of meals and delivered untold numbers of groceries and critical supplies to members of our community who were impacted by COVID-19. On behalf of the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors, I would like to thank Food for Thought for being there for us yet again to take care of some of our most vulnerable community members and to ensure that we were all able to get through the pandemic together. So. Thank you very much, Food for Thought, for all of your work. And I'm just so grateful to have you in our community, helping take care of us through thick and thin, whatever life throws at us, whatever the next disaster is. I know that Food for Thought will be there to provide that compassion and that healthy food that really is a lifeline to our community in these trying times. Thanks so much, Food for Thought. Well, thank you to uh, Senator McGuire and to uh, Supervisor Hopkins. Good evening. My name is Ken Cunningham, and I did not have to be elected to public office in order to be here tonight. It's my pleasure to be here on behalf of Food for Thought for this very, very important fundraiser. Just a couple of little housekeeping things will get out of the way right away. First of all, a huge, huge thank you to Ron Rubin Winery. They have stepped up and they are matching donations tonight up to $25 thousand dollars so we're asking you to be generous this evening let's be generous enough to make sure we get that entire match here to food for thought if you're the kind of person who likes to just jump right in and make a donation we're making it easy for you we've got a very simple link it's donate f f t Dot org. That's donateffft.org. That'll take you right to a link that will allow you to make a donation right now in any amount that feels appropriate uh, to you. Another way you can help us between now and 8 o'clock, our online auction 
is still open. There are some fabulous items on there. Your chance to have your very own mailbox made by Patrick Amio. You see Patrick's sculptures all over Sonoma County. You can have one right in front of your house to be used as your mailbox if you're the uh, lucky high bidder. There's also some great art, some great wine, some great opportunities, but remember it closes at 8 p.m. And in today's technological age, it's all run by a computer, meaning at eight o'clock, the little window comes down and it is over. So if you're interested in those uh, auction items, the online auction, now's the time to get those last bids going in there. We've got a couple of very new programs we wanna talk to you a bit about this evening. Program number one is aimed at uh, pregnant women in Sonoma County who may have food insecurities in their families. Food for Thought has expanded their programs to address those specific needs. And also, we're for the first time able to also reach out to cancer patients in our community. One of the beauties of the Food for Thought program is the food comes out not just for the patients, but it's to take care of the entire family unit. That's a really important step in making our community healthier and uh, on, on the road to recovery. So we are delighted that you're here. We're asking you tonight to be generous in a few minutes. We're gonna give you an opportunity to actually make those donations and we can track them online right here. But meanwhile, let's turn the program back to uh, Misty Wood. Misty's gonna be in here and uh, give you an opportunity to see some other good reasons they're going to motivate you to be very generous tonight. Misty, come on in. All right. Thank you very much, Ken. Next up, we're going to hear from Jim Kamarik. Jim is a client with Food for Thought and a volunteer, and he also was a previous board member. And most importantly, out of all of his roles, he is a dear friend to this agency. I hope you enjoy Jim's story. I moved to Sonoma County from San Francisco in 1990. I was a DJ in the city and kind of living life in the fast lane. And when I moved up here, one of my first neighbors volunteered at Food for Thought and she connected me with Betsy Van Dyke, who at the time was the um, CEO, of the, was the Ron Carp of, uh, of Food for Thought. And Betsy helped me set up my medical care. Um, she hooked me up with Face to Face. She, got me signed up for Food for Thought um, and really set me up with all of the services that I still get today. I was a board member for five years, which is the term for, for until I termed out. And I was asked to join the board as the client representative, where I was that kind of conduit between the client and the board. So really for me, Food for Thought was, was just a life-saving connection, not just in food. It gave me sustenance. I came in here and, and I was fed with the love that I felt from the place. And as a volunteer, I was fed by giving that love back to the clients and listening to the clients. I always felt heard here. And so that's, that's, a, that's a huge deal to me. The changes that the pandemic brought to the food bank were met so quickly that there was just no stalling out between the services in the building and taking care of the clients outside of the building and um, following all the guidelines. And just that they were so quick on the uptake, there was no interruption in my food when I really all of a sudden started to, you know, need to come in here regularly for groceries to put three square meals on my table. I love coming to the food bank and walking through the gardens and seeing what's growing and what, you know, what might be in my order that day. They've gone to a more healthy approach with food distribution by cutting down on salts and sugars. They meet with clients to see what their specific nutritional needs are and help tailor um, the foods that are available to the client. I am now fully vaccinated. <laughs> And so I, I feel a change in myself, kind of a sigh of relief, just knowing that I'm fully vaccinated. And I, I'm hopeful. I think that things are starting to open up again. I'm, I'm interested in seeing how Food for Thought is going to evolve into the new changes because they're really so good at doing that. Along with my hopefulness, you know, li living through the pandemic, I, I might have had a different perspective on that because I've, you know, I've lived through the AIDS epidemic. So this is not... Um, this is not my first rodeo. And so um, I've remained hopeful through this because I've, I'm a survivor. You know, I, I wasn't expected to survive AIDS and I'm, you know, 37 years later, I'm still here. Food for Thought has played a huge part in that.
I always really enjoy hearing the client's perspective because it really uh, hits home with me about why I like to be a board member here at Food for Thought and some of the important work that we're doing here. So next up is Ron Karp. He is the executive director here at Food for Thought. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of inside information. Ron has been our executive director for 25 years. It's truly extraordinary. So let's take a trip out to our organic garden that we're growing right here in Forestville to hear more from Ron. Hi, welcome to our virtual table. Thank you for joining us. This year, of course, this is a virtual event because it's not quite time to open up, but hopefully next year we'll be back outside and having a really nice event where we can enjoy food and wine and each other's company in person again. Last year in March, when the pandemic arrived in Sonoma County, we had to make so many changes at our food bank. For one thing, we couldn't have volunteers anymore because we couldn't keep the facilities safe so we had to hire staff, serve our clients out in the parking lot and do so many more deliveries. Our community really stepped up at a time when we really didn't know how we were gonna make this happen. They provided so many donations and helped us deliver all over the county. We had 40 different volunteers each week delivering uh, you know, to Petaluma, to Healdsburg, to Cloverdale, to Sonoma, to the coast. I mean, all over this huge county. That generosity was really amazing. We went from serving 850 people a year to over 4,000. That included people with HIV, congestive heart failure, COVID-19, and other illnesses. We simply could not have done that without your support. It takes a big community to do this work. It's not just food for thought as an entity, it's really the support of the community. And I wanna thank all of you for that. We're here at the Food for Thought building in Forestville. And you might think Food for Thought, well, this is it, this is the building. But Food for Thought is so much more than that. It's all of the volunteers and the members of the community and the incredible support that we get that makes this happen. So without all of you, Food for Thought would be nothing more than the shell of the building. Ron's right, it really does take an entire community to come together to help serve the people of Sonoma County. You, you may remember that this time last year, our uh, virtual table event was for COVID-19. So we're gonna hear from our client services team and they're gonna share some of the successes we've had with our COVID-19 relief program. Food for Thought launched its COVID-19 food program after uh, getting a call from the county and requesting help with their infrastructure. We were really excited to get to serve clients with COVID. There was a real urgent need. One of the things that surprised us was, of course, the number of people that needed our services. And as a result, we changed our programming around a little bit. We figured out um, how to serve those clients most efficiently. And we really worked on expanding our capacity. We helped hundreds of people. I just saw that record, like hundreds of people a week almost at, at the peak. It was very overwhelming, but we got it out. We help people. I came into contact with one of our clients whose name is Josefina. She had heard from one of her neighbors about the services that we were providing and so she reached out and Josefina lived alone and didn't have much family in the area so she was definitely in need and had had COVID at that point for almost a week. But Josefina described that she felt like she was uh, like short breath, kind of like, um, I don't know the exact translation from Spanish to English, but almost like drowning. Um, so it was very difficult for her to breathe. Uh, and I think that's kind of what set off an alarm for me. So I took it upon myself to deliver her food order just because we didn't have any available routes for that specific day to go to her area. It was nice to kind of put a face to the name. We do call our clients weekly to do a check-in and take their food orders. So a lot of the time she would kind of express some grievances um, and just different things that were difficult for her to find in the area or get to considering she was quarantined and didn't know a lot of resources in the area. So I would do my best to point her in the right direction on where to get those resources and be able to, you know, help her situation. So we send toilet paper, we send food, we send um, Clorox wipes, face masks, and so all that stuff really helped her fully recover. Uh, Maria 
was referred to us through the county and there was this miscommunication about her sick leave the first time around. She got infected twice. What we did is uh, I, would, I called uh, another resource and we cleared that out. So uh, she got that leave and she got the help that from the first infection as well as the second time. So that way she, she wouldn't be struggling. Maria was definitely stressed when we talked to her. She was still keeping it together because she was calling everywhere she, she could, uh, but definitely needed help and clarification regarding uh, where, where she could get services. And that's what we did. We generally help out with the food, of course, but sometimes when we see the situation, we try to help more than just giving food, you know. Helping Maria was like helping my mom, you know? Like, she was older, she would be like my mom's age, and we just, we just hung out on the phone for a little bit every time we helped her. It was very, it was very lovely. Like, I, I loved helping her, and uh, a lot of the people in our community don't really understand the bigger legal or bureaucratic help out there and people get lost in that. You know, we, we both figured out that miscommunication was her job. We helped her regarding the, the food situation. I also redirected her to another service while they were getting back on their feet, you know? So she was so thankful she kept mentioning that the last day. I felt like I was saying bye to a family member. We really want to meet clients where they are. We really acknowledge that clients come to us from all different nutrition situations. Maybe they have a lot of problems with addiction. Maybe they have mental health issues. Maybe they have really severe food insecurity. We really want to offer healthy choices and enable people to eat healthfully. But we really also want to acknowledge that people are just who they are and we try to approach people without judgment and um, make it as easy and comfortable for them to be a part of our Food for Thought programs as possible. So what I love about Food for Thought is that the staff really leads with heart. And tonight we are asking you to look inside your hearts and your wallets as we move into our Fund a Need program. So as I mentioned earlier, Food for Thought has two new programs that these Fund a Need will be supporting. The first is for pregnant women who have food insecurity, and the second is for clients with cancer. Both of these are a real need in our community, and we really are uh, excited about your generosity and participation tonight to help us get these programs up and running. And as a reminder, as Ken mentioned earlier, Ron Rubin Winery is very generously doing a matching donation of up to $25,000 tonight. So at this point, I'd like to pass it off to our auctioneer extraordinaire, Ken Cunningham. Ken, come on over. Great, thanks very much, Misty. It's, uh, it really is a uh, delight to be here in support of Food for Thought and all these great programs that uh, they offer to all of us here in Sonoma County. So again, as Misty just reminded you, we can't say this too often, Ron Rubin Winery matching all donations up to $25,000. That's a huge deal and let's make sure we hit that match and collect all of that money. And again, if you're having trouble navigating where you need to go to to donate, let us make it easy for you. It's donateffft.org. That link will take you right to the page you'll need to be on in order to make your donation. Now, a lot of you have been to fundraisers before. You know the way Fund a Need works, most likely. But in case you don't, let's just quickly recap here. I'm going to give you various dollar amounts. When I hit the dollar amount that is most meaningful to you and what you are here to donate tonight, we want you to push that donate button and uh, we're going to be tracking it. We have a little thermometer. We hope it becomes a big thermometer actually. Uh, and we're going to be tracking those donations as they come in. So let's try to uh, blow the top off of that thermometer and get things started. Our first level tonight is 75 hundred dollars seventy five hundred dollars is the donation we're looking for right now and we want to say a big thank you to tom and julie atwood who you know you got to have somebody who initiates these things they stepped up and uh, they're donating tonight seventy five hundred dollars to start off our fund need that's a really really terrific thing if you're there at home Give them a hand right now. Somehow out in the universe, they'll hear it. Promise me that. So $7,500 is our number right now. If someone would like to join that $7,500 club, along with Tom and Julie Atwood, now's the time to put, put up your, uh, your hand, press that donate button, and get that donation in at $7,500. 
If not, we're going to move on to our next level. Our next level is $5,000. Now, we're going to give you some ideas of what these various levels mean to food for thought. For example, a $5,000 donation, here's what that can represent. Weekly groceries for 35 households here in Sonoma County. That probably means something over 100 people are being affected by your $5,000 donation tonight. So if you can make that donation of $5,000 Push that donate button. Let's get those numbers coming in at $5,000. Our next level is $2,500. $2,500 represents up to 10 wholesale orders from the food bank to bring this, the food you see behind me on these shelves to get that food here. The good news is for Food for Thought, they don't have to go to the local grocery store and pay full retail prices. They go to the food bank, they get a very special deal and your $2,500 donation right now assures them of 10 more orders from the food bank. So let's get those numbers in at $2,500. Our next level is $1,000. $1,000 represents uh, purchasing, for example, uh, six cases of high quality pasta sauce, not just any sauce. Food for Thought is very careful about the nutritional value of the products they are distributing in our community. So this would get that, it, you know, pasta, very important part of uh, a real staple for folks who have food insecurity. We've got the great high quality sauce to go along with it. Our next level is $500. $500 represents 10 cases of high quality cereal. No offense to anybody else out there, these aren't Cocoa Puffs they're buying here at Food for Thought. They're getting high quality cereal. It's a really, really good thing. And, uh, and as I say that to you, I wanna thank uh, George Harrington. George just uh, called in or has pushed the magic button at the $1,000 level. George Harrington, George, we thank you very much for your $1,000 uh, donation. And uh, Glenn Finch, push the button at $500. Glenn, thank you very much. That's what makes this magic happen. And that $500 represents up to 10 cases of that high quality cereal that I was just talking about. Our next level is $250. $250 could go out and buy six cases of toilet paper. I don't think I need to overemphasize the fact that, you know, Food for Thought is trying to take care of the entire family, the entire household, and the needs include food and others as well. Estelle Rogers, we thank you for your $250 donation. Thank you for bringing that in right now, $250. And our final level tonight is a $100 level. What does that $100 represent? Have you seen the price of gasoline lately? Your $100 donation right now to Food for Thought, make sure that we keep that van filled with gasoline to make deliveries, to do pickups, whatever. It's a really important part of the whole process here at Food for Thought. And your $100 donation tonight will mean that we'll be able to keep that van filled up. A big thank you to Nancy, I hope I'm saying your last name, Buford correctly, and she has made a $100 donation to Food for Thought. Don't be shy out there. You should all be joining in at this point. Lou Rosenberger just joined in at $500. Lou, that's it. Now, I'm, you know, I mentioned various dollar amounts. You can punch in at any amount that's meaningful to you, like right now. Maybe you wanted to donate $1,084. You can do that. Just hit that button and put in the amount that you are donating tonight. So we want to thank you in advance for your generosity. The, uh, the thermometer actually is moving out there. I can see that it's up from where we started things. And uh, we're rushing in with another... <laughs> Hot off the presses, Paul Olson. Paul, thank you very much for your $250 donation tonight. $250. We really appre we appreciate every donation in every amount 
The main thing is show us your generosity tonight to keep all the great existing programs and to support these new programs for pregnant moms and for patients, uh, for clients who uh, have cancer. So we're delighted you're here watching us tonight. We hope we've kept this kind of entertaining for you. We're trying to move it along and be respectful of your time as well. So thank you for your donations tonight. And uh, Misty, I believe it's back to you. It is. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you so much to everybody at home. We're very, very grateful for each and every donation that came in. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Remember, the auction closes at 8, so that's about 15 or 16 minutes, and it closes at 8 o'clock sharp. So I really have enjoyed myself tonight. I honestly can't wait to see you in person next year, and hopefully not virtual. To close off the evening, I'd like to welcome back Ron Karp. Come on over, Ron. He's got a few final words. Thank you all for uh, um, participating in our virtual table. We really appreciate it. And I wanted to make a few thank yous. First of all, again, uh, we thank Ron Rubin Winery. They're very local, less than a mile and a half up the road, and they're very generous. They've supported us for many years. So thank you, Ron Rubin Winery. And I also wanted to thank all of our donors, uh, our sponsors, both individual and corporations, our staff, our volunteers, our participants. Thank you all for helping make this a success. And I'd like to thank the film crew at uh, V Livecast for uh, doing the great work of putting this together. It's highly technical. It's way beyond anything we can do. So I thank them very, very much. And our au auctioneer extraordinaire is Ken Cunningham. What a great job. And he's fantastic. And I also wanted to thank um, Misty Wood. She's a board member of ours. She started here many, many years ago as a volunteer. And she is so professional. So we're lucky to have Misty on the board and lucky to have her tonight. So thank you all for participating. And we really appreciate it. So Ken and Misty, come on over. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.